people the Ted of Metal Water here bringing you another reaction video. Today's reaction video Gay Theory Logan Paul's Fixed Fight. And yeah, I don't know what to expect from this, so I'm going in this blindly. So yeah, I need to be staring at this. Anyways, uh, yeah. I know it's going to be a game theory, so let's see what's in store. Starting in three, two, one, start. Introducing our fighters! In the blue corner, we have the toe-headed troublemaker, the asinine assassin, the junkyard mutt who lost 15% of one nut, look it up, Logan Paul! And in the red corner, we probably have somebody who's famous for TikTok dances or something. No, wait, wait it's, it's an actual boxer? And not just any boxer, it's the former super lightweight, welterweight, and light middleweight champion of the world. World? A guy with a professional record of 50 wins and no losses, Floyd Money Mayweather? Come on, no, that can't be right. Something fishy is clearly going on here. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show where we give you the old one-two punch of research and analysis and then finish you off with a big uppercut of meta-commentary. Now, theorists, it should surprise exactly zero of you that I consider myself a lover and not a fighter. Ever since I was an elementary-aged MatPat, I knew that I was much better at solving my problems with pencils, paper, and protractors than my dainty and admittedly clammy fists. And yet, it's a little disturbing to find out how much of an audience there is champing at the bit to see Mark apply or rearrange my teeth for $24.99 a pop. Or if that's not the fight you're looking for, might I instead interest you in watching Logan Paul get punched in the face repeatedly. The former Vine star, controversial YouTuber, and reincarnated podcaster has, over the past few years, made the boxing ring his latest form for lunacy. And I gotta admit, these things have actually been legitimately athletic affairs. Don't get me wrong, still don't like the guy, but gotta hand it to everyone who's been involved in these productions. They are way bigger and way better than they probably needed to be. Now, if you've taken the vegan approach to the past few years of YouTuber beef, I'll fill you in real quick. Logan Paul has fought British YouTuber KSI on two separate occasions. The first, an amateur bout in England, and the second, an official professional fight in Los Angeles. The first fight was a draw, and while KSI won the second fight in a split decision, Logan had two points deducted for an illegal punch when KSI was down. If he'd had those two points back, Logan would have actually won the fight. And this wasn't just some backyard unplanned and hissy fit these guys had plans. They had training, and they were definitely really hitting each other. If you go back and watch the fights, it's enough to make you wonder if KSI and Logan Paul could hang with actual professional fighters. Well, we were initially supposed to get our answer to that exact question on February 20th, at least until the match got... I would exactly be surprised if they actually pit him against Mike Tyson, since he's... he's coming out of retirement from his boxing career. Yeah, and he's been in multiple uh, media, well, some certain media, i not familiar, but I know there was an anime version where Mike Tyson was in, and yeah, I do remember Mike Tyson's punch out, but to be fair, that wasn't it was it was just a reskin of the dream the dreamland boxing champion yeah okay continuing delayed. You see, that was when Logan was slated to be stepping into the ring against Floyd Mayweather Jr., who isn't just a pro boxer. He holds the professional boxing record for most wins without a loss. 50 wins, zero losses. Heck, not only has he not lost, he's only ever gotten knocked down to the mat officially once, and even that was debatable. He was a world champion at multiple weight classes, and while at 43, Mayweather is a bit past his prime, his last big fight was against UFC superstar Con 
Conor McGregor, whom he beat up until the referee had to stop the fight. Now, if you're one of those people who finds Logan Paul's antics annoying, offensive, or worse, you might be saying to yourself, awesome, a professional boxer is finally gonna give this jerk the beating that he deserves. And while yes, that might be true, Floyd Mayweather here is no hero, friends. He has a long legacy of misogyny and multiple charges of domestic violence, so, you know, the whole thing is just two villains making a lot of money for each other. I'm rooting for a sinkhole to open up under the ring and swallow both of them into the center of the earth. But failing that, it's still worth asking, what is really going on here? Is there a chance that this can be a legitimate fight? Can Logan Paul shock the world by being the first to beat the champion of champions? Will he sustain even more of the brain damage that allegedly prevents him from feeling empathy? Oh my god, are you kidding me? Or, the more likely scenario, is there something fishy going on here? Put up your dukes, friends, because today, I ain't pulling any punches. If we want to evaluate Logan Paul's chances against Floyd Mayweather, we have to start by talking about the eyebrow-raising size difference between the two of them. Now, you might just think that Logan Paul is a big doofus, and you'd be right on both counts, but that includes being right about the word big. Logan Paul is listed at 6 feet 2 inches tall, and in his second fight against KSI, he weighed in at 199.4 pounds. This puts Logan Paul in a weight class known as a cruiser weight, and barely below the 200 pound threshold for heavyweight. By comparison, Floyd Mayweather is teeny tiny at 5 feet 8 inches tall, and in his last professional fight, weighing in at 149 and a half pounds, a full 50 pounds lighter than Logan Paul. You know what they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, so maybe the size difference isn't that big of a deal, but in the world of professional fighting, 50 pounds is vastly different. Floyd Mayweather was most recently seen fighting in the light middleweight division, which has a maximum weight of 154 pounds. In other words, Mayweather would have to go up four weight classes just to qualify to fight Logan in a professional bout. It's not uncommon for fighters to go up or down one weight class to make a fight happen, but that kind of weight disparity just doesn't happen in normal boxing or mixed martial arts. It's a size difference roughly equivalent to me fighting a sixth grader, which just sounds like a normal day in the comments section. That is something I never saw before. Cruiserweight? Hmm. That's interesting. Interesting indeed. <laughs> Learning more about boxing every day. Continuing? section. Badoom ching Self-conscious men might tell you that size doesn't matter, but simple physics give Logan Paul at a much higher weight a massive advantage, since the force of a punch is the mass of the person throwing it times the acceleration with which they throw. With a 50-pound advantage, Logan can throw punches 25% slower than Mayweather and still hit with the same amount of force. And if he knows his angles and spacing properly, Logan can hit Mayweather in all sorts of places where Mayweather can't hit him back. In my video about the first Logan Paul KSI bout, we talked a bit about re advantage, the importance of having longer arms than your opponent, making it possible to hit them at a distance when they can't hit you back. Logan Paul's reach is 76 inches, and though Floyd Mayweather has relatively long arms for a fighter his height, his reach is only 72 inches. That creates 4 inches of what's known as the pocket. And again, it might not sound like all that much, but if you're thinking of boxing as a sport of precision, 4 inches is the difference between grazing someone's nose and reaching through their skull and into their brain. So do we have any fights with comparable size differences that we can use for reference? We sure do, but only in heavyweights because there's no upper weight limit. A good example would be the 2009 bout between heavyweight champion Nikolai Valuev and challenger David Hay. David Hay was a heavyweight at 6 foot 3, 217 pounds, but Valuev, nicknamed the Russian giant, dwarfed him at 7 feet tall, 316 pounds. In the end, Russians are the biggest, you know, aside from Africans. Not trying to be, not trying to stereotype. This is just a fact. And nine extra inches and a hundred pounds didn't end up mattering as David Hay defeated the much larger opponent by ducking under punches, moving around the ring much faster than Valuev, and scoring on counter punches to win by decision. So if Logan Paul's size advantage isn't a guaranteed win, that means the fight is going to come down to technique, and that means Logan Paul is in deep, deep trouble against one of the most technically sound fighters of all time. Let's start off with a comparison of their offenses. In the second fight against KSI, Logan had two major strengths: his jab and his counter punch uppercut. The 
jab, the quick straight punch with the lead hand is almost always going to be the main weapon for someone with a reach advantage. Th that was the punch that Logan threw the most in his fights against KSI, and he often landed it pretty cleanly, as evidenced by his advantage in CompuBox statistics from the fight. Logan landed 28% of his total punches in the second KSI fight, compared to KSI's 21%. On the other hand, none of the jabs appear to do much damage. They just scored points on the judges' scorecards. If you want to talk about Logan doing actual damage, that occurred when he threw a couple of counterpunch uppercuts late in round 4, knocking KSI to the canvas. The uppercut finishing move, my friends, not just for Little Mac anymore. So yeah, Logan Paul definitely has one punch knockout power, but it's worth mentioning that the uppercut was there for him because KSI threw a lot of his punches like he was trying to pop Logan's head off like a rock'em sock'em robot. That's the kind of position you're pretty much never going to see Floyd Mayweather in because his standard strategy isn't going into the ring guns blazing, but instead breaking down his opponents and setting traps for them to fall into. Here's an example from Mayweather's 2007 fight against the then undefeated British boxer Ricky Hatton. Mayweather is backpedaling towards the ropes with Hatton pursuing him. Without looking, Mayweather knows that he's about to hit the ropes and predicts that Hatton's about to throw a big punch since Hatton thinks that Mayweather is going to be trapped in the corner. This allows Floyd to slip out, throw a crisp right hook, and... Fatality. That's probably Mayweather's biggest weapon. If he can bait you into doing what he wants you to do, he can be prepared to catch you with the exact punch that you're going to be most vulnerable to. The signature punch Floyd Mayweather throws better than nearly anyone else is a body jab. Most fighters jab straight to the head and only hit the body in close quarters, but not Mayweather. While these jabs to the body don't feel good, their main purpose isn't doing damage, but rather to lower the opponent's guard down and leave the chin vulnerable. This calculating chess game style fighting is why a 2012 analysis by CompuBox calculated that Floyd Mayweather's connect rate with his punches was 46%, best in the world and almost 20 points higher than Logan Paul's rate in his second match against KSI. That means if oh, Logan no, wants to win, man. his defense oh, will have to no, be better than Floyd Mayweather's, right? Well, there's a King Hippo-sized fat chance of that one happening because that same analysis of boxers' hit rates also showed that his opponents hit Floyd Mayweather with their punches a measly 16% of the time. Mayweather's signature defensive move is called the shoulder roll, where he angles his left shoulder up to protect his face, keeps his left arm horizontal to protect his body, and uses his right arm to protect the other side of his head. When he's using it effectively, it's almost like he has three hands defending him. You can see it on display in his fight against Olympic gold medalist Oscar De La Hoya, where De La Hoya throws about a dozen punches in a couple of seconds, but only like one of them actually connects. All the rest of them either deflect off Mayweather's raised shoulders or on his vertical right arm. On the other side of things, we got Logan Paul, whose defensive stance was criticized a bit by the commentators in the second fight against KSI. And while he generally stayed out of harm's way against KSI by moving his feet and circling the ring, I have to believe that Logan Paul is gonna get caught a lot more often when he's facing one of the most precise fighters of all time who's been fighting professionals for 25 years. So how is this fight actually gonna go? Well, there are two most likely scenarios as I see it. Scenario one, Floyd Mayweather's experience, technique, speed, strength, stamina, ultimately means that he boxes Logan Logan to death, whether by setting a big trap to end the fight with one big punch, or just by scoring points and staying out of trouble the whole fight. Scenario 2, shenanigans. Doesn't this fight seem a little strange to you? Why on earth would Floyd Mayweather accept a fight against a relative amateur, someone 50 pounds heavier than he is who's never won a single publicized fight? Well, two reasons really. First, the clout. Logan and his brother Jake, as much as I hate to admit it, are the two biggest things to happen to boxing in recent history, since Mayweather's last fight in fact his 2017 bout against UFC superstar Conor McGregor. Oh sure, don't get me wrong, there have been plenty of talented boxers and big matches in the intervening years, but when it comes to increasing search trends for boxing online and getting new viewers, especially younger viewers interested in the sport, nothing compares to the influences of the Pauls. And Mayweather, being smart, knows that a bout like this will bring him even more clout in the industry, more public awareness online, especially since it's been nearly five years since he was last in the spotlight. Second, and the most obvious answer is Floyd's nickname, Money. A match like this would obviously be profitable for a lot of reasons, but there's one stipulation here that Floyd might find exciting that you might not think about. Consider this. We know why a retired Mayweather would fight a YouTuber. Continued relevance, more money, etc. But why would Logan want... We got to have money. Yeah, that's what exactly he's saying. He's doing this for the money. No. Though if it, hold on. Though if it is rigged, then that would basically mean that uh, 
that would basically mean that uh, this is going to this is going to be a cop out of a fight and not an accurate one indeed continuing want to fight someone almost certain to beat him senseless. Getting pummeled by Mayweather is almost certainly going to get him laughed out of a boxing career before his career even gets started. Unless, of course, he doesn't get pummeled. You see, you have a lot of people eager to get into the ring with Floyd Mayweather. A match against him, even in an exhibition setting, can make a star. Provided, of course, that you don't embarrass yourself. And the thing about boxing is that, well, there's a lot of ways to ensure that you don't embarrass yourself. Boxing is full of matches that are, um, fishy, to say the least. In the early and mid-1900s, the sport had deep ties with the Mafia, which has been a hard stigma for boxing to shake. It also doesn't help that recent Olympic boxing results have had some pretty suspicious judging behavior, getting the Olympics Committee to consider whether it should remain an official Olympic sport. As you might imagine, any sport heavily connected to betting has a high temptation to fix fights, but that alone isn't enough. It's also easier to fix a fight in boxing than almost any other sport. Boxing is just two guys in a ring, with the winner being the last man standing. It's easy to take a fall and just stay on the mat. No one can ever really judge what does or doesn't happen in a person's body when a particular punch lands. To this day, people still debate the outcome of Muhammad Ali versus Sonny Liston II. Sure, you might not know that fight by name, but you definitely know the image associated with it. In this fight, Sonny Liston falls to a phantom punch less than two minutes into the match, only for the whole thing to be called off seconds later. Rigged? Many people seem to think so for many reasons, especially considering Liston's long association with the Mafia and the possibility that he had already thrown the first fight against Muhammad Ali. And making all of this stuff worse is the fact that it's hard to objectively call this sport. If neither opponent gets knocked down, matches are either won or lost by a judge's decision, and points are delivered based on a subjective ranking of a fighter's performance in each round. As I mentioned before with KSI vs. Logan Paul, an extra point or two here or there can easily swing the result. And when there's no standard of measurement, it's easy to call things one way or the other. So what am I saying? in all this, nothing. But we do know that both of these men have a flair for spectacle over substance. Logan has repeatedly shown himself as someone with, um, questionable moral fiber. And as for Floyd Mayweather, he's fought some fake fights before, most notably against The Big Show at WrestleMania 24, but he's also been accused of fighting fixed exhibitions before. In 2018, Floyd Mayweather fought popular Japanese kickboxer Tenshin Nasukawa, knocking him down three times in less than three minutes despite landing very few significant punches. That fight was also not professionally sanctioned, just like Mayweather's fight against Logan Paul, meaning that even if Mayweather had lost, his official undefeated record would remain intact. So here's the thing, in this matchup, whenever it happens, Mayweather doesn't lose, he just doesn't. That just doesn't make sense for his brand or for anyone in this case. But Mayweather can go easy on Logan Paul, land enough light punches to get a high judge's score, but not so many punches that it knocks Logan out. And Logan can likewise land a few of his own and stay on his feet the whole time. It's a win-win situation for everyone. Everyone. Mayweather cashes out and stays relevant, Logan gets the street cred to be taken as a serious boxer, opening the door to other professional bouts with big names in the sport. And to sweeten the deal, because Mayweather is a smart businessman who definitely knows what he's doing, he would negotiate to own a portion of Logan's career moving forward. This makes Logan a star in boxing, and Mayweather continues to profit for years to come. And we know that this billionaire boxer wants to make another billion, only in a different industry. Here's the tale of the tape, my friends. I'm not saying that's what's gonna happen whenever these two finally get in the ring together, but let's face it, when two villains go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, the audience might just be the ones getting sucker punched. But hey, that's just a theory. A game! In as much as boxing is a game, theory. Thanks for watching. I just learned that uh, boxing is rigged for the most part. Mm. <sighs> That's very disappointing. Yeah, that was that was Logan Paul's fixed fight, and yeah. <sighs> very disappointing. Let's just, let's just hope that, uh, 
let's just let's just hope that someone actually tries to defend this and say um, that's not true or anything like that. It's not rigged, or it's his or previous matches have not been rigged. <sighs> so yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. Without further ado, the Tenor Men of Water, signing off.